Tazewell County's Health Department is applauding a bill Governor J.B. Pritzker signed last week. Now, smoking in a vehicle with anyone under 18 will cost $100 for the first offense and $250 for every time after that. But Tazewell County Health Department says what happens to children as a result of secondhand smoke is what's most important. Children that are exposed to secondhand smoke are much more likely to experience um, inner ear fluid on their inner ear, so they have a lot more ear infections. Um, they trigger asthma attacks, and then that also can uh, be a contributing factor to SIDS. This new law is already being enforced. More cases of vaping long are being reported by federal health professionals. The CDC and the FDA say that as of August 27th, 215 possible cases have now been reported by 25 states, but more are under investigation. They say it does not appear the cases are linked to one product, but many of the patients have reported using e-cigarettes containing THC. In many cases, those patients experienced symptoms gradually, including shortness of breath and chest pain before they were hospitalized. At this point, the only advice coming out of this investigation is don't buy vaping ingredients on the street or modify the device. An Illinois man died from a severe respiratory illness last week and had recently vaped. If you want Peoria made goods, there's now a website for that. Launched last weekend, it's PeoriaMA.de. It's intended as a one-stop shop for locally made goods. The web designer believes it will appeal to a lot of creative types, including the kinds of sellers you might see at a farmer's market. Anybody here in the region that makes things, whether that be uh, a 3D printed object or you know, a laser cut thing or food, uh, like Joe with 309 Cultures, uh, or an artist that might be selling one or two paintings. Under consideration for a good 12 years, he believes this new website can be a stepping stone and pathway to growth for local entrepreneurs. He says it will offer them a place to see their wares without having to set up their own websites or rental spaces. You may have noticed some metal creatures popping mm -hmm. up across Peoria. It's not an invasion. They're coming from a local artist. One of my daughters and I just drove by one and noticed it the other day. <laughs> Stephanie Rodriguez joins us live in the studio with how these critters came to be. Stephanie? Well, Caitlin, Tyler, these are just some of the huge sculptures here behind me on the monitor that are grazing the city, thanks to Nick DeCaro. He tells me his alter ego is helping him sell his art for thousands of dollars. I caught up with Nick today as he worked on finishing this elephant on his front lawn. His alter ego, who he calls Monte de Gallo, is the namesake behind his company, Sculptures by Monty. He says he decided to bring these metal animals to central Illinois after being inspired by their flesh and blood counterparts in Africa. I was on safari and I saw these magnificent creatures right before me. And when you see them right in your face, it is spectacular. They are so much larger and impressive in person, so much more than in captivity. They are the Gala says he works with local welders to create these scrap metal sculptures that take between 400 and 500 hours to complete. Now, coming up tonight at 6, I'll tell you how Monty came to be and what he plans to do next with these life-size animals. Wow, they are certainly impressive, and I love his enthusiasm. What's your alter ego known as? I don't, I'll work on that, Me I'll work too. on that, but his works are amazing. They are. A local historic landmark is now celebrating a special birthday today. That's right, our own Kyle Beach. You went to Bloomington to take a look at one of the oldest homes in town. Kyle? If you've driven down Taylor Street in Bloomington, you may have missed this piece of history and not even realized it. The historic Scott Vroman house has been here for 150 years. It was built in 1869. The first owners were Julia and Matthew Scott. It stayed in the family when their daughter Julia married Carl Vroman, who was an assistant secretary of agriculture under Woodrow Wilson. Now the historic home operates as a bed and breakfast owned by Pam Kovaleski and her husband. We fell in love with the house, basically. It's, it's uh, a joy to have different guests come in from all over the world. Much of the home is original, including the hardwood floors that creak with every step and the Edison lamps in the parlor. Coming up, I'll show you some of the most historic pieces of furniture in the home, including a dining room table that one of our past presidents may have sat at. In Bloomington, I'm Kyle Beachy, 25 News. All right, Kyle, thank you. The question tonight is, should you be eating outdoors or in? Will we see some rain? Ah, good question. For that, we turn things over to Jesse Gwynn, filling in for Chuck tonight. So what's the answer, Jesse? Well, so I think we're going to be dry, which is good news, especially for you football goers. First week of Friday night football action here in central Illinois. 
Well, let's take you outside as we've got dreary looking conditions, but again, dry. There's Uptown Normal 71 in uh, Uptown nearby at uh, Central Illinois Regional Airport. Same story, same story in Peoria as well. Most of us teetering around that 70 degree mark. Radar and satellite looks like this. You can see the cloud cover. It is thick. But we're dry uh, as we uh, see that rain off to our south. I think that complex of showers and storms stays south of I-72. So anything here in central Illinois should be dry tonight. Just feels a smidge humid out there. Let's talk about the tropics. Hurricane Dorian, a category three with 115 mile an hour winds right now. Here is the latest from the Hurricane Prediction Center. Not good news for the Bahamas and for eastern Florida. Still uh, looking at a possible category four on the eastern coast of Florida with most of the state to be affected somehow. And again, this is still a ways out, but it is uh, something that uh, folks are taking seriously, especially as we go into our uh, Labor Day weekend for the folks there in Florida. So we'll continue keeping you up to date with the latest on that. Plus the latest on our forecast coming up that Labor Day weekend outlook. Temperatures are climbing. I'll tell you about that. Plus if there's any rain in store, it's all coming up. Caitlin. Thank you, Jesse. And getting back to Dorian now being that major category three hurricane it is growing, fueled by the warm waters in the Atlantic. Right now, the National Hurricane Center is predicting it will make landfall Tuesday morning along the Florida coast, and that's where Jay Gray is tonight. A flurry is building across the Florida peninsula, not the winds and rain from Dorian. The storm's still well off the coast. No gas? Okay, there. The rush right now is millions of residents across the state stockpiling food, water, supplies, and preparing while they can for what's expected to be a violent storm. This is going to be uh, a major hurricane, uh, Category 4, potentially even Category 4 plus. The system is slowing down, growing and gaining strength, fueled by the warm Atlantic waters. Landfall now looks to be early Tuesday morning, but where still isn't clear. We're below sea level, so I think everybody's... Um, Fearing for the worst. That fear has Mike 